Ghost. I am stoked about week 11 of the NFL. Some great games. And now you know what? We're in playoff mode. This is playoff mode. By the way, I want to I want I, I want to rip Eagle fans for a little bit. Just for a little bit here. In a good way, sarcastic way. Yeah, you too, Tone. You guys are so spoiled. You're just spoiled. In a good way. You're spoiled. Spoiled. You know, I want I want to do something here. So you guys have really probably I would say since what? 1990 somewhere in there or when Reggie How you doing? Care what Tone's going to say here. He's spoiled. <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> hang on, hang on. You guys probably since 90 have seen some of the best football and some of the best football players in league history run through your city. How would you like to be the Chicago Bears? In 61 years, you've only had three decent teams. The 63 title team, the 85 Bears, and what was that thing? The 07 Bears that went to the Super Bowl and lost to the Colts? They've had three teams in 61 years that were decent. The rest of them sucked. Can you imagine being a Chicago Bear fan? You're rooting for nothing. You're going nowhere. You make consistently shitty moves. You do nothing right. You don't draft right. You don't recruit right. You don't evaluate right. You don't sign free agents right. You do nothing right. Nothing. You do nothing right. Ah, you know, we won 22 or 26. This ain't enough. You're bitching about eight and one. So spoiled. It's almost narcissistic. You guys are like narcissists. I mean, not that I don't mind that. <laughs> hey, not, not that I don't mind that. You've had three teams in 61 years. Shit. I mean, you know what? Wheels just goes like this. That would be like being a Browns fan. How incredibly disgusting are the Cleveland Browns organization for making it seem that Deshaun Watson didn't want to play when he had structural issues in his shoulder and he was telling you, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. And the last game, he's 14 of 14 in the fourth quarter playing through injury. This is why. You know what I hear from media, even on our channel and radio stations in Philly? This is why these doctors, they have the best doctors on the planet, and they take care of their players. No, they don't. There's a conflict of interest. You're paid by the owner, not by the Players Association. The Cleveland Browns, because they have invested over a quarter of a billion dollars and Deshaun Watson played an injured player. And then the head coach comes out and says, he's been cleared. Then we find out this morning that he has to have emergency surgery because there's massive structural damage. Players Association's the worst in the planet. The Browns do not... They've had numerous situations when it comes to their medical care for their players that goes back three decades. How about the staff infection all the players got because they weren't cleaning 
the showers and the work area to standards so that the players wouldn't get sick. You can go back and chronicle so many different things that they have done. They made, I ripped the Sean. This is why I have to always remember not to be a scumbag media guy and just remain being a talk show host. I hate many of the people in my business because they're low lives and I get dragged into it because I work in this business for 35 years and I have to always remember, never trust a doctor that is employed by an NFL team ever. Never trust them because they do not have your best interest. They only have the owner's best interest. Terrible. That's that's such a terrible thing. I'm sorry. Hey, Deshaun Watson, I'm sorry. You were playing hurt, bad ankle, bad shoulder, concussion. He's trying to play through it. He's telling people, I got structural damage. I should have listened to the player instead of the organization. I don't know what's wrong with me sometimes. I get sucked into, I guess, like everyone else. That's my fault. Deshaun, I'm sorry, dude. I mean, you played a guy and you cleared him knowing full well he's got rotator issues and the last game finished him off and you still played his ass. You're damn right, senor. You're damn right I said that. Because the organization made me believe that. Because Kevin Stefanski said that publicly. That's why you never trust the coach. They lie. Coaches lie. Teams lie. The NFL lies. And the Players Association does dick about it. That's why you get many former players that are dying. You see, you got to always remember something. You're damn right, senor, I should know better. 27,000 men over 100 years have played in the NFL. There's only 16,000 of us, 16,000 of us alive today. Okay? I'm one of them. They're not going to ever give benefits to all the players. They're just going to wait for us to die. Keep it in court. Let these guys die. They care about player safety. You think the Browns care about Deshaun Watson safety? Or do they care more about their investment? And if you can't play, they'll get an insurance policy because they have one on them already. Give a shit about player health. They talk a big game. Now, I'm not saying that that's across the board, that there aren't organizations that don't go overboard when it comes to player safety. I'm sure there are. You think the Cardinals do? The Cardinals are thought of as one of the worst organizations when it comes to player care. You got to like pay for Cokes when you work at the Cardinals in the cafeteria. Okay. Hey, look at Purdy. The Eagles are hiding Hurts' injury. They should hide it. As long as they're not hiding it from the player. They're hiding it from you? Me? Who cares? Why should I give more intel to the Kansas City Chiefs knowing that the level of injury for Hurts, that's not what I'm talking about here. They should hide his injury. Why? The media doesn't need an explanation. You got you to stop understanding. They're not the law. They, they cover us. We're not accountable to them. When a guy like Selsky or any of these guys from the Inquirer or from the NFL Network, I don't owe you anything. You cover me. I'm not accountable to you. 
that Belichick has always handled that's why the media hates him and why they're after his ass and his job now is because he's taken a shit on him for 25 years. That's why they don't like him. You ever notice the people look at a guy like here, here, here's a great example of how somebody covers somebody. Media hated Barry Bonds, right? They love Kirby Puckett. Come to find out Kirby Puckett is sexually assaulting women on a basis constantly, either inside the Minnesota Twins organization or outside of it. But because Bonds was not very accessible to the media, you took a shit on Bonds. Kirby Puckett gets in the Hall of Fame because he put this illusion out uh, that you that he was a good guy, and he's not. I mean, if I don't treat you well, I'm not going to cover you well. That Look at Aaron Rodgers. Look at Aaron Rodgers. That's why the media, media keeping people like T.O., like T.O. T.O.'s a dick. Is he a first ballot Hall of Famer? Of course he is. He's probably what one of the top three receivers in the history of the game. Maybe the second best, the Rice. And they punished him because he was a dick. Not because of something else. Can you imagine that? You took my legacy and my career and turned it into your vote and made yourself relevant using my name. That's my problem with the media. They kept him off the first ballot because he was a dick. Okay, yeah, hey, I have to look. I didn't know that that was the bylaws on how you get into the Hall of Fame. Deshaun Watson gets that money, and because they didn't like the way Deshaun Watson behaved when he was in Houston, which is none of your business, this is not the league of good dudes. You're a reporter or a supposed journalist that covers the team. You're not a moralist, but you like to add that shit in, okay? You like to add that shit in on being a moralist. I hate these Johnny Do-Gooders. I so do, man. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a good one, Purdy. My good friend, Kurt Schilling, because Kurt Schilling has a different political view than you. They're keeping him out of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Hey, that's worthy. An MVP, the sock game, helped bring a World Series to the Boston Red Sox, was a dynamic pitcher with the Phillies. You keep him out because you don't like his Trump views. What a bunch of assholes. As long as they aren't hiding it from the league. That's right, Adam. On their weekly injury reports, who cares if they hide? That's right. That's right. But the media cares because it's how we cover some of the stuff that Tone and I were talking about yesterday. Look at how you take race and behavior to cover certain athletes instead of doing the right thing. Look at Jalen versus Dak. Who's more popular in the NFL, Dak Prescott or Jalen Hurts? Who do you think? I don't think that's a debate. It's Dak Prescott. He's more popular. Here, you guys will fight me on that in here. But it's the only place you're going to win that argument is here. Because you'll never win that anywhere else. Jalen Hurts is not more popular than Dak. He doesn't play on the most popular team. Dak Prescott plays on the most popular team. Are they the best team? No. Have they been the most consistent team? No. Well, consistently not winning big games? Yeah. Jalen Hurts fights an uphill battle because you know why? In the media's eye, the only reason that they talk about the Eagles is because they want to piss you off so that your clicks and your clicks, they're not looking for you to give them good vibes or good reviews. They incite you. And you get incited because you're passionate. This is the best I've seen Tone's behavior. All year long. You know why? They didn't play a game last weekend. <laughs> That's, hey, 
he's been calm, you know, you, you got clear takes. But you get a game around that guy as we get closer to the weekend. That sphincter factor with my boy starts getting a little hotter and he starts like, got to win this game. Got to win this game, man. That's a good thing, though. It's a good thing, and that's why I love talking to you guys. I really do. That's why I love talking to you, man. Hey, by the way, we're going to talk about that Super Bowl and the last two games with the Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs. Our friend Tone will join us as he does each and every single day at 3.30. This segment, Baird Brooks from NBC Philly will join us at 4.30. Former Eagle and Super Bowl champion will join us at 4.30. And we will get his take on that Kansas City game. I want to show you something here. I want to show you something here that I think is going to be the determining factor of this ball game on Monday night against Kansas City and Philly. Would you bring Dorsey in? Um, I don't want to upset anything right now. That's an off-season move. Why, why add that? You know, I, I, I don't need that. Now, does Dorsey know how to game plan against Kansas City and some of the AFC teams, depending on who the team is in the Super Bowl? Hypothetically, if the Bills get to the Super Bowl, I'd bring him in as a consultant. Absolutely. But right now, I want, I want to stay status quo. I want things to be settled. I want to hear common voices. I want things to be normal. Look, the less change you make, the more opportunity you have for continuity and success. Keep adding things, changing stuff, changing formulas. You become the Bears. I tell you the one thing that the Pittsburgh Steelers are, and they'll always be, they're the gold standard on how you win in this league for the last 60 years. Oh, since 69. They're the gold standard. It changed January 17th, 1969 when they hired Chuck Knoll. And only have had two other coaches since. Stability, self-awareness, self-evaluation, and player development. And not getting off their game plan. Wobbling it, moving it around, updating it. That's what the Steelers do. They don't have these knee-jerk reactions like you see in Dallas. There's no knee-jerk reaction. They don't do that in Pittsburgh. That's why they've won the most Super Bowls. That's Get this. Don't you see the common denominator? The least amount of head coaching changes in the most Super Bowls in the Super Bowl era is in Pittsburgh. The least amount of head coaches since 69 been hired and the most Super Bowls equates to being the gold standard. There's no, there's no getting around that. You don't see organizations with 18 different coaches and the most Super Bowls. The less you have moving around in your front office, and it's the reason, hey, the reason that the Eagles have been successful since Toads and Norman Brayman, they've got a system inside the Novacare complex. Devin goes, Patriots too. Yeah, that's since Robert Kraft bought the team. They were a shit show under the Sullivans. A complete shit show. They were terrible under the Sullivans. I know I I I I believe I believe if I'm not mistaken that Tony Eason was under the Gillette guy. And it wasn't under the Sullivan family. I believe that. I, th I think the Eason thing was under the Gillette guy, Victor Kayyem. That's it. Thank you, Philly. I think that was under Victor Kayyem. It may have been under the Sullivans because the SMU coach was hired. And I, I th it may have been. Anyway. There's no coincidence, stability. 
Here's something that you're going to look at for tonight or Monday night's game. Here are the last two games that the Chiefs and the Eagles have played. And it's kind of incredible when you think about it. How many people in here think? How many people in here think that the Eagles have the best O line in football? One of the top three. How many people think that? That you have one of the top three offensive lines in pro football? Not right now. Top. Th- I think you're top three, Devin. I think you're top three. Top five, top three. Okay. Listen to this here. Kansas City. Definitely top three. They're not playing like number one. But how about this? Can we say this about the Eagles? They have capabilities of being the number one offensive line unit in the league, right? Get this. They're not playing at their best, but they have ability to be able to be number one. I I, I completely believe that. Listen to this. Here's the 2021 game. 42-30, Chiefs win by 12. They ran the ball in that game 32 times for 200 yards at a 6-3 clip. The Eagles ran the ball 19 times for 103. We're averaging 5-4 and abandoned the run. Why? You were on pace. You were on pace to have a 200-yard rushing game. If you would have rushed the ball as many times as Kansas City in that game, but because you got behind, you panicked. Because you didn't think your quarterback could throw you out of trouble once they got the lead. You panicked. It's not so much that the fact, look, they ran the ball because the Eagles weren't proficient enough in stopping the run. I get it, but you stopped running it. Now let's fast forward to nine months ago. The Chiefs ran the ball 26 times. So in two games, they've run the ball almost 60 times on you. They had 158 yards and 6-1 a clip. So in two games, 6-3 and 6-1. Now I know why Patrick Mahomes didn't have to throw the ball a ton or need a ton of yards. They were getting six yards of play, running the ball on you. Now now let's go to the other side with your best O-line. You ran the ball 32 times for 115, 3.6. They shut you down. Weren't you the second rushing team in the league last year to Chicago? The Chiefs shut that offensive line down. And I didn't really think they were that hot last year stopping the run. I didn't really think their defense was that hot. I do now. They got away because here in the two games philosophy-wise, Sanders put the ball on the carpet. They got nervous that turnovers were going to hurt them. And this was after, what, was, did Sanders drop the ball on the carpet before the scoop and score? Or was it after the scoop and score? I think he dropped the ball on the carpet before the scoop and score, right? Okay, yeah. First play of the game, that's right, Tone. So they saw the fumble. Then the scoop and score, they stopped running it in the second half. They stopped running it. Kansas City stuck with it. There is no doubt, in my opinion, the key to that ball game is not through the air. Mahomes is going to get his yards. 
But if they get 130 yards on you, rushing the ball like they have, what are they averaging now? Well, look at this, 358 in two games. They got 358 yards in two games against you that they've played. Pretty much the same personnel, same O-line, same quarterback, same play caller. The enemy part of that, I get it, but it's still Reed. If they get 130 yards on you, they're going to have the same result on you. You've got to hold them under 100. Because remember something also, what Washington does. Okay? They're averaging 100. And the last two games against the Philadelphia Eagles, the Kansas City Chiefs have averaged 175 rushing yards on you at about 6.1 yards a carry. They're annihilating you on the run and not in the air. They're almost averaging more running the ball than throwing the ball on you. Think about that. A guy who had 5,400 yards passing and over 40 touchdowns doesn't need to throw the ball more than 180 yards against you because they've dominated you on the ground. This will be the key factor here in this game right here. Had the Eagles improved? Yes. And get this, they improved in the area that they've beaten you in. So, you know, when we were doing those matchups on the passing game, Mahomes, because I, I, I could throw this at you here. You know the one thing that the Eagles are great at? Here's the most important statistic that the Eagles are great at. You know the Chiefs are number one in scoring. I think it's 29-2 that they're, and I think the Eagles are third at 28-1. Seals, what did the Broncos do right that Eagles can replicate to beat the Chiefs, or does it come down to more talented secondary? Adam, let me let me let me let me let me go here with you here. Let me let me finish this thought here. Here's the most important statistic that the Eagles have defensively. Two of them. Now, hey, are they still number one in rush defense or have they dropped the five? Because I, I, I saw conflicting numbers where um, are, are they still one? Okay. Yeah, they're 13th in scoring defense. But again, Tone. The difference between 21 points and 23 points, we're talking about a point and a half, okay? Is that really, okay, 13th versus 7th? The Eagles are 7th in points allowed. So at the end of the day, yes, it's true. They're giving up a shitload of passing yards but they're not giving a shitload of points up, okay? They're just not giving a ton of points up. Kansas City has to be great in the red zone, and they have to score in the red zone on the Eagles and not just put up a ton of – hey, listen, I'll live with 450 yards passing and 60 yards rushing. I'll live with 550 yards. It's what you did against Brady. You got to almost play a game like you did against Brady when you won that 17 Super Bowl. Because I do think you're improved. Okay? You're giving points. I mean, no, excuse me. You're giving yards up at an astounding clip. But here's something else that you have to rectify. Monday night, you can't be the worst team in the National Football League in surrendering first downs because Mahomes will be third and short every single series. He'll be third and one, third and two, third and one. More teams complete more first downs on your defense than any defense in the league. Okay? Those are things to look at as you go forward here. But to me, the rushing numbers... 
this is the game. This is going to be the game here. If Mahomes, Mahomes doesn't need 200 yards because the defense is better. See, they've closed that gap. They had to do all these things because the defense was still immature and not a ripe team yet. Well, as I said to you going into that Super Bowl, they may not have had the rankings they needed, but they were ascending. And it was getting better and better and better to where they are right now. They got more margin of error than you do. And here's the reason why they have more margin of error. They're getting turnovers. You're not. The things that are keeping teams close to you. People go like this. Sills, when you look at the number, thank you, Everett. When you look at the numbers offensively, they're kind of better than last year, actually. Yeah, but get to, guess what you're doing? Okay? You, the defense is keeping the opposing offenses in third and short. Teams are winning first down on you. They're winning first down. The, the trends dictate that. You're the worst team in the league in first downs allowed. But where you're good, and this comes to Desai, you're only seventh in points allowed. It's saving you. That number alone is why you're eight and one. And the rush defense. Because nothing's really changed offensively. Except this. The one thing for me that I have a problem with, sustained drives are, don't seem to be on the menu like it was a year ago where you'd go on those 14-play drives. And that becomes, and is because you're a passing team now. You're going to have more three and outs. You're going to have more stalled series. And that's just what passing team, all passing teams go through that. And you're going to have more abilities to turnovers. Okay. Yeah, Rev goes like this. Kansas City is also turning the ball over. But here's the thing. Their defense got better. They're holding teams to three and outs, which they couldn't do a year ago. Now they are. Now they are. I'm telling you, this game on Monday is going to come down to the rushing yards, not the passing yards. Okay, if Kansas City gets 130 on the ground, they're number one. Get, you want to hear something insane? Monday night, their number one priority is to get the run game going against them. Intermediate passes, short screens, maybe bubble screens. Maybe what they'll do also is um, they'll get the running backs involved in the short passing game. There's all kinds of ways to, to cover if you don't think you can run the ball against someone. Brady did it all the time. And this kid's cut from the same cloth as Brady. When you, when you dissect this game, Kansas City, the last two games against you, they weren't trying to establish the pass. They were trying to establish the run, and they did. They outrushed you, and they outclipped you when it came to yards per carry. They're getting, hey, why in the world would I run? Why in the world would I throw the ball with Mahomes even? Every two plays, I'm getting 12 yards of carry. Why would I do that? Plus, it's low turnover plays. Why, why would I do that? Do I think they could do this to the Eagles this year? I think Andy's going to come up with a way of not, you know, you can have a good running game without handing the ball off. Short screens. That kid Pacheco, He's probably going to get about 350 yards this year receiving and 1,000 yards. He's going to have about 1,300 yards from scrimmage. He's a pretty good, versatile player. He's like Swift. If you look at Pacheco, he's a lot like Swift. That's how they're – I think they want to establish him in this game, Monday night. Screens and shit like that, wheel routes. Short passing game to get the linebackers back off. Again, Kelsey's going to kill. They want Kelsey in the second half to be the factor on them backers. Now, do they put Kevin Byard on, on, on Kelsey? I still think that's a mismatch. 
I still think that's a mismatch. Okay. Can you slow him down now? Okay. All right. So to me, again, running, can you believe that Kansas City is not a Andy dissected the fact that you were 22nd and 21? See, in 21, you were 22nd. Last year, you were 16th, 200 to 158. Reed's going to be looking to get 130 yards against you because he knows you improved on it. They're going to try to get 130 yards rushing. If they get 130 yards rushing, Mahomes will have to throw the ball more, which will give more opportunity for tip passes, maybe a pick, a turnover, fumble. I think this game's going to be close. And I think that the strategy in this game is going to be vital. You know, I, I I think one of the most, I think one of the most asinine questions, and I asked you guys this yesterday, and I don't think it's fair. Who's got the better coaching staff? Oh, Dan. Thank you, Captain Obvious. You know, great coaches get beat. This comes down who has the best talent. Not who has the best philosophy. Now, does it help? Absolutely. Second half of that game, fourth quarter, Andy Reid with the lesser team beat you. He completely beat you, and that's what coaching came down to. Personally, I think Kansas City wants this to be a fourth quarter game too. They don't want to get back and forth. They want a fourth quarter game. They want established runs because they think their guy can beat your guy in the fourth like he did a year ago, okay? You don't want, I mean, look look at what Mahomes did. He was down 10 and a half, came back and won. I'm not saying Jalen can't do that because you got AJ there and you got other weapons. Kansas City doesn't have that luxury. Kansas City can't let that game get out of hand. 10 points was probably the margin going into half that they probably wiped their brow off going, if it was 17, that thing could have been a mess because you'd have had to throw and abandon the run. Okay? Rev goes, coaching scares me. This is what I say to you, Rev. Andy Andy Reid wants a 23-23 ball game in the fourth. If you're the Eagles, you want to be 27-20 in the fourth. I want to make Mahomes have to try to run the ball burn clock, and I want him to burn timeouts, and I want him to try to go vertical because outside of Kelsey and with your run defense, you could shut that thing down. You have an opportunity here, okay? You know, that was one of my topics here. Who's got the better team? Look, what's the worst part of the What's the worst part of the Chiefs? Think about this for matchups. What is the worst part of the Chiefs? It's their receiver. It's their receivers. What's the worst part of the Eagles? It's their secondary. Isn't that kind of a wash? When you think? I mean, I, I look at I look at Kansas City's wide receivers and go like this. Are they better than what the Eagles have in their secondary? If they are, not by margin, it's because the quarterback probably puts them in a better position to be successful like he did Juju Smith-Schuster. So that gap is not as wide as you think. So when people like, like me even, if you don't analyze this thing and you don't really look at it and go like this, Mahomes is going to throw for 450. Really? With who? Travis Kelsey, and they give me his cohort. They got wide receivers on that team named after Stripper, Skyler something, Stormy Daniels. I mean, they really don't have anything out there. But is that good enough to move the sticks? What was the one thing? There were two factors. I think you look at the Washington game. If you're Kansas City, okay, you look at Washington. They have the D-line to get it done, 
okay? And they have the receivers to get it done. They only needed, they outrushed you in both games this year. Think of that. The Washington Commanders, not a team you want to write home about. Kind of still in it. Not horrible by any stretch. But I wouldn't call them a dominant run team. But they outrushed you. I wouldn't call Kansas City a dominant run team. But they've killed you in two games. If you notice, though, the run numbers have come down. Reed's going to have to counter that which means more passing yards. He's going to need more passing yards Monday night to beat Philly because he's not going to get 158 yards, I don't think, against the Eagles' run defense. I I do not believe that they're they're going to surrender one. I, I would be shocked. If they get 158, it's over. Kansas City wins by 10. It's been the trend the last two games against you. Because what will happen, you'll abandon the run. Now, personally for me, I don't think the Eagles are a dominant run team right now. And here's why. The one dominant player that you have that's the dominant run guy is Hurts. You guys keep trying to tell me. I think you're fourth in rushing. That's fool's gold. They were built up on two games, really. You haven't run the ball decently, in my opinion, last month and a half. It's been average. And no one would ever confuse Swift as a dominant running back or a power back. He's never been in his years in the NFL. It's clearly why Detroit moved off him. It's because they never played him and they pulled him out like the Eagles pull him out in the red zone. Okay, you guys keep telling me that the guy who's switching positions is going to be the most important run factor on Monday night in Jurgens. So Jurgens is going against Chris Jones. Good luck. Chris Jones killed Sam Milo. But Cam Jurgens is going to block Chris Jones. Really? I want to see that. His first game back is against Chris Jones. And you guys think that the run game will improve when that guy shuts you down completely. A guy who's switching positions. It's absurd to think that. A first-year guy who's out of position is going to shut down the best run defensive tackle in the league. Okay. Cam Jurgens destroys Chris Jones. Really? A guy who's a center. He'll have help. He'll need it. Because last year, he shut you down. Kelsey, Sayamalo, and Lane. You guys had one oh, you guys had 115 in the game. They had 158. Held you to 3-6 a carry. That's Chris Jones. And they're better. But you think moving a guy over is better than Isaac Sayamalo? It's not even a debate, and I won't, because there's no reason to get upset with people who are making things up. You're going to put basically a rookie on Chris Jones, and you're going to tell me your run game is going to improve. The only way your run game improves is if Hertz is healthy for that Monday night game. To me, Jalen Hertz gets 55 yards. What did, what did he have in the game um, in the Super Bowl? Wasn't he the leading rusher of any running back in of both teams? Wasn't Hertz the leading rusher? Didn't he have more rushing yards than anybody on both sides of the ball between the Chiefs and the Eagles? So if he doesn't have that in that game, that's trouble too. What do you have, 70 yards? 
Eagles' best run attack was with Cam, right or wrong? Um, I guess. Sure. It's Chris Jones, dude. How in the world do you think a guy playing out of position is going to block Chris Jones when he crushed you last year? Nine months ago in the Super Bowl, as a matter of fact. This is not a this is not more than a Monday night game. He crushed you in the Super Bowl. You know, you could have easily called him player of the game. <clears throat> Hertz had 70, Pacheco had 76. Okay, so Pacheco had the most rushing yards. Makes sense. They had 158. Eagles had. So let me get this right. Of the 115, Hertz had 70 of it. So outside of your quarter, think about that game now. Outside of that game, you got 40 yards rushing from your backs in that game. Totally why you lost the ball game is that Kansas City didn't have to do much in the passing game. When you don't have to do a lot in the passing game, there's not a chance in hell you're really going to have a lot of turnovers. You had 40 yards rushing from your backfield in Super Bowl 57. Really? That ain't good enough. That ain't good enough against Kansas City Chiefs Monday night. You get 40 yards rushing. Are you going to hand the ball 25 times? Are you going to are you going to run the ball 32 times Monday night? You think the Eagles run the ball 32 times Monday night? When's the last game they I, I think the Cowboy game, didn't they run it 28 times? Okay. Isn't he? Steve goes, that game doesn't matter. It's nine months ago. Same personnel, same coaches almost. Oh, wait. No, not you. Look at how people look at that and go, that game doesn't matter. Why wouldn't that game matter? They've done the same thing to you two straight games. Why wouldn't? This is, again, I'm glad people like Steve show incompetence and ignorance here because the Chiefs have done the same thing to you two games in a row. They haven't thrown the ball a lot. They've run the ball a lot. They've run the ball 60 times. 60 times. The, the Chiefs in two games against you. 60 times. I think the Eagles need to mirror the Cowboys game plan. They ran it 33 times. They stuck with it. Hertz had 10 attempts. The running backs had 23 combined Hurts also passed 23 because they're looking for some type of balance there. New year, new coordinators, V? That scares me. Please, again, don't bring up the coaching. You need to hang with the talent because if you start talking about coaching, you're going to start making yourself not feel comfortable about Monday night. There's, there's nothing you have anywhere on your coaching staff except your old line coach. That's anything in the room of what Kansas City has. They've proven that to you the last eight quarters, haven't they? Or are you still in denial? Are you still in denial that you think you can outcoach that team? You're going to have to outplay that team. You, you may have the matchups is what I'm trying to get to you if they do this right. Okay? And the wide receiver coach. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, do you really think you have to be a great wide receiver coach when you have Devontae Smith and AJ Brown? What are you telling them? Turn and catch? <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just now if you want to talk to me about the Alabama wide receiver coach who recruits all them guys like Judy and like all them guys, Calvin Ridley, and you know, all them guys, Devontae Smith. You want to talk to me about the Alabama wide receiver coach? I'm probably going to agree with you. But what do you, hey, what, that's like when people always ask me about Phil Jackson. What do you think Phil Jackson fundamentally was teaching Michael Jordan? Turn and shoot? <laughs> hey, Mike, turn and shoot. Okay. 
I, I, I'm not sure, you know, how, how much – I'm not saying hey, – if Phil was the balancer of all the plates and he was the guy that was dealing with all the maniacs, okay, right? Wide receiver coach, <laughs> hey, the guy at Alabama is pretty good. All the guys he's got in the NFL, Mari Cooper, all them dudes, crazy. How many wide receivers from Alabama are in the league right now? I think, what, five of them had 1,000 yards in the NFL last year? Well, that's that guy down there now. Is his name Ruggs? Is that it? That dude down in Alabama, man, he's got like five guys that had 1,000 yards. Mari Cooper had 1,000 yards. Devontae Smith had 1,000 yards. I mean... Phil Jackson was a puppet master. Henry Rudds. Dude, that guy can recruit. Dude, I'd like to have that guy in the Eagles. Or, or if you're looking to build a team, whoever drafts that kid, Marvin Harrison Jr., I'd like to go how much you want. He'd be like the Jeff Stoutland of wide receiver coaches. He knows talent. How would you like to have that guy on draft day, Henry Ruggs? When you're in the room next April and he's recruited every single wide receiver on the planet and he picked one guy or now, now, yes, no, yes, yes, no. Didn't he do Jalen Waddle too? So wait a minute. Who wouldn't want that guy going, I'll take him? It's mostly if you have a franchise quarterback. Yeah, you need that guy because I recruited that guy. That guy decided to go to Ohio State, but he's a great player. I'd like to have that. All right. Here is this topic. Tell me what Monday night is to you. Chiefs and Eagles. What is Monday night to you? I'll tell you what it is to me in a second here. Rematch? Exciting? Respect game? A game more looking forward to than the 49ers? Maniac, of course likes to eat just chicken broth and doesn't like to eat pasta fazool. He likes – it's a nothing game. So I can already tell you he doesn't like lobster bisque. Damn shame, maniac. I thought you were more of a high-end guy. Now I know you're a commoner. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Nothing wrong with being that. He's a guy that has a bowl of soup and a hat on the on the soup kitchen line. <laughs> It's okay, man, with a fish head in it. <laughs> hey, hey, maniac, give me Vazo, huh? Hey, no, no, you're you're a guy with broth and a fish head. It's okay. There's guys with fish heads. There's nothing wrong with a fish head. I got it. I'm all right with this. Statement game. Maybe we can gain some respect with a win. You're never going to get the respect you deserve. Here's what this game is for me. Aunt Betty, excuse me, this motherfucking MVP game. This MVP game. You got one on Thursday night, too. You got people talking about Dak Prescott against the Panthers. Trying to make a case for him. This ain't no making no case. This is Ali Frazier. This is this is Ali Frazier. This is the next installment of Manning and Brady. That's what this could be. Manning and Brady. Well, you have these two incredibly gifted guys making statements for themselves. It's an MVP game. This is a Jalen Hurts respect game. This is a signature game. 
This is what this bitch means. That's what this is. Jalen Hurts, this is a respect game for him. Hey, you can say it all you want with nine games in. He's the leading candidate for the MVP. That ain't going to win it. You lose to Mahomes, back of the bus. They're waiting for him to lose. Mahomes could lose this game and still be in it, right? Because the equity he's built up. Right? Jalen Hurts has no margin of error. This game is all about proving you can beat the, That's it. Beat them in Arrowhead. MVP belongs to Hurts. This is a game that... Do you know between Taylor Swift being there, and you guys may not think that's a big deal, but that's going to bring more eyeballs to that game. It's Monday night. It's probably going to be one of the most. Do you guys remember that game between the Rams and the Chiefs? It was golf and Mahomes. Do you remember how big that game was and how people were talking about that game? It was a shootout. And this is a rematch of the Super Bowl, too. Do you guys remember how huge that game was and how people were building that thing up? That thing was supposed to be played in Mexico, right? Then they played it in L.A. I, I, at the Coliseum, I think it was. Hertz has been playing his entire career with zero margin of error. He's, he's built for this. Believe it. Oh, it's not that. No, no. Here. It's not that. He's not that guy, what Tone just said. No one cares. This is a game they can't deny it. I agree. Thank you, Hawk. This is I can't deny it. Shit. You ever have a guy that you don't want to give respect to? And you just look. Brady fought this early. It was Manning his entire early part of his career. I just see about MVP. I need a win and a super boring. I don't care. Devin, listen, of course, that's part of, but this is a sidebar part of that game. There's so many storylines. Of course, ring, win. It starts the, with those two. Ring, one, win. Absolutely. No one's denying that. But on a personal basis, don't you want your quarterback for all the hard work, all the people pissing on him, the journey he's been on, don't you want people to validate him? Don't you want that? I'm not sure he does. But as a fan base... Wouldn't you rather have people look at your quarterback than the way they look at McNabb? Or Wentz? Or Dak? Don't you want that? Tone's like, shit, I want more respect for Hurts. This is a validation game. Some of you are going to go, he's already validated. Really? You really think that? Do you really think the league, the players do? The players do. You really think the national? Seals, he's the betting favorite to win the MVP. They'll come up. He loses this game Monday, back at a bus. He loses two games in this Five-game stretch, not a chance in hell, even if he gets home field advantage. You know, I, I brought a point up to somebody. How is Dak Prescott in an MVP conversation when he's not even going to win his division? I mean, don't you have to have like a metric somewhere where you cut that shit off? So somebody would have a conversation about 
Dak Prescott being in an MVP conversation, and he's not even going to win his division. Can I show you why? And this is my humble opinion. Can I show you why your boy doesn't get respect? You want to you want to you want to see it? Where is it? Here. I think this has a lot to do with how the public perception, excuse me, I'll take that back. The media perception always has hurts in the co-pilot seat. Ready? Let's do this. And any particular order, you, this is not really a power list or anything, but I tried to come up with 10 quarterbacks in the NFC. Hurts? Golf? Dak? Brock Purdy? Sam Howell? Kyler Murray? Geno Smith? Derek Carr? Josh Dobbs? Baker Mayfield? What starting quarterback right now in the NFC would you put? Take take one of them out. Do me a favor. Take one of those guys out and put someone else in. I'm more than glad to. Justin Fields, you would put in head of, okay. Justin Fields ahead of Baker Mayfield. Sure. Okay. I'm all right. Justin Fields, sure. Okay. I think Mayfield's better though. No, I'm not going to do that. Mayfield's better. Who else did you put in there that's active right now playing in the NFC? Anyone, anybody, I don't believe her. I don't believe Fields belongs in that. Maybe Fields over Dobbs because Dobbs only been there two games. I mean, right? Daniel Jones is not active. Hurts, golf, Dak, Purdy, Howell. Murray, Geno Smith, Carr, who was fired from the AFC, Josh Dobbs is a substitute teacher, and Baker Mayfield. Those are your top 10 quarterbacks in the NFC? Wow. Is that a bums list? After Hurts, Golf, and Dak, it's a list of bums. It's a list of bums. Let's take a look at the AFC side. Not in any order. Mahomes. Mahomes. Lamar Jackson. Joe Burrow. Josh Allen. Justin Herbert. Tua, Trevor Lawrence, C.J. Stroud. I wrote this list last night before I heard the news. Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson. Those are 10 quarterbacks I came up with in the AFC versus that shit list of NFC. Jalen doesn't get respect because of the company he keeps. And that's how the media looks at it. They look at the AFC with those quarterbacks. They don't see Jalen playing against the competition that those guys play against each and every single conference game. There's a legitimate superstar quarterback that you're going against. You're going against Josh Dobbs. Or you're going against Brock Purdy or Sam Howell. Or some of the other cast-offs, Danny DeVito. That's what... 
it's it's the company he keeps. Is it unfair? Completely. But when you have on Thursday night, Joe Burrow versus Lamar Jackson, that's why Monday night, Mahomes and Jalen, that's what the media and people want to see. Let me let me let me let me put it to you this way. Okay. If you're calling Josh Allen trash, outside of Hertz, Golf, and Dak, the entire NFC is total trash. If Josh Allen played in the AFC or if Burrow did played in the NFC, by the way, does Hertz fit over in the AFC? Yeah. Does Dak? I don't know. There's one quarterback that could play in the AFC, and he's in Philly. The rest of them, it's the company he keeps is why they don't respect him. Tell me I'm wrong. Geno Smith ain't making any quarterback lists in the AFC. Um, Baker Mayfield ain't making any list for top quarterbacks in the AFC. Sam Howe ain't making a top 10 quarterback list in the AFC. That ain't happening. That's just not happening. Takes more than one or two years to get full respect. Um, I'm sorry, but I disagree. It only took me nine games to give CJ Stroud respect. That kid's a ball player. The question will be, will he be consistent? That's what we'll look at. By the way, I got something else to say about your boy Hertz. I hear everyone doing this on our channel, Philly most predominantly in Philly. If you guys in all of our shows and all the radio stations that tune in, if all of you got to keep making a pitch that he's elite, he ain't. Nobody makes the pitch that Patrick Mahomes is elite because he is. If you got to keep making some pitch and keep telling me that he's elite, he's elite, he's elite, he's elite, he ain't. He ain't. You don't have to oversell me, kid. You either are or you aren't. When you're elite, you don't have to debate it. You don't have to have a conversation about it. You know it. Why don't you act like it? Most media people are making some sort of half-ass, half-cock sales pitch that hurts his elite. You're either elite or you're not. That's not a debatable conversation. The ones that debate that are still not sure he is inside themselves. You think Ali debated if he was the greatest of all time? He knew it. He told people it. I'm the greatest. He didn't say I was, you know, I'm 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 a I'm elite and I'm the Ali was the he was it. When you you ever hear Tom Brady having people ever debate whether he was elite? Peyton Manning or all the great ones, Joe Montana. You either are or you aren't. I don't need some dude sitting in an afternoon show on a radio station using the word elite 29 times. I find that to be stupid and then i start to think he's not when you're michael jordan there was no debate on elite you either were you weren't you didn't debate magic johnson did you debate that Allen iverson was one of the greatest players of all time ever in philly that's a great that's a great conversation here hang on because he got to a 
he got to a finals. Hertz got to a championship. Did you guys ever debate if Allen Iverson was one of the greatest players of all time in NBA history? Did you ever debate that? Or did you just know it? You see, to me, when you watched Iverson do one crossover, you knew it. You knew it. Iverson had help. You mean that team that he carried all the way to the NBA Finals in one game two in L.A.? You mean that team? Huh. I was in L.A. I don't remember it that way. <laughs> I, I don't remember it. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know how many times he does that shit to me. Tone does that shit to me all the time, man. I, 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 okay. Did you guys really have that? I'm, I'm going to get to that in a minute here. Oh, did you, did you ever debate Allen Iverson? All right. What Tone is doing right now, he's getting you prepared to give you an opportunity to win yourself some gift certificates from our good friends at Hooters and some merchandise. All you have to do is email us that fabulous code word that he threw out, dancilioshow at gmail.com, and you will get an opportunity to win yourself those gift certificates and merchandise. Dancilioshow at gmail.com. We do it all the way to Friday. We give you an opportunity to win yourself that, and then you may hear your name called on a football Monday like Leo and Andrew who are this week's winners, and congratulations to those guys again. Also, too, don't forget it's Happy Wings Given from Hooters. You know, and during the month of November, they want to thank each and every single one of you with all the locations in the Northeast area from Rhode Island all the way down through Jersey, through King of Prussia, giving you an opportunity to see these specials that they're doing on a daily basis for you, like Ice Cold Coors Lights. You're going to love it. The light drafts are $2.99, 25 cents of each purchase goes to local charities, the 2024 Hooter calendars are out. They got $25 worth of coupons that are inside the calendars. You can get those at northeasthooters.com. Also, the lunch specials, Monday through Friday from 1130 to 3. Absolutely love the boneless. How about this? Happy hour, Monday through Friday, 4 to 6. Six items, 6 bucks. Try to fried pickles. Tuesdays, buy 10 wings, get 10 boneless free. Wing Wednesdays, 1983. Again, northeasthooters.com. That's northeasttutors.com when you roll into any one of them. Do me a favor. Tell them Big Sill sent you. Hooters, the perfect.